Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jessica Sowards. Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm in my high tunnel right now. So if you've been tracking with us this year, you know that we have had some issues in this high tunnel. We just put this up this year and we decided to establish some no-dig beds and we brought in some purchased compost that we got from an organic distributor. We transplanted our plants that we'd started from seed Everything looked really great until it didn't anymore. Uh, just within a short period of time of getting everything planted, we started to see some real weird damage on the plants. Some really heavy curling, stunting. The plants just looked really wispy. And I had kind of thought, well, this really looks like herbicide damage, but maybe it's coming in on drift. I'm not really sure. Uh, but we kind of started to take note and some other the other few areas we were seeing issues were the also the areas that were with the soil uh, fast forward and the company that produced the soil actually reached out to me said that they had a known issue they were trying to get to the bottom of they'd been doing a lot of testing and nothing had come up they were taking responsibility for it but frankly it was something that had really happened to them also because they were very careful with where they sourced all of their stuff and still unfortunately ended up with the contamination so since then we have been taking samples kind of trying to decide how to move forward in remediating this soil I've gotten a lot of feedback from people all over the place it's not an issue that's limited to this company but nightshades and legumes specifically are very very sensitive to this particular uh, herbicide so at this point I'm suggesting that anyone who purchases soil or compost before you do something as drastic as fill all your beds with it or put it in a big space like this, sprout some beans in it first. It can be just like a cheap bag of beans from the store. But by sprouting those, you'll know really soon whether they're having a reaction to that. Beans sprout, they come up just within a few days. And in our experience, because we did plant some beans in this contaminated soil also, they were showing severe signs of damage within the first week of coming up and they were dead within a week and a half and from what I'm understanding right now the best way to test your soil is by growing something in it which is an unfortunate test especially if you fill your whole high tunnel in it put a lot of the plants you started from seed but all hope is not lost there are things we can do to heal the land and heal the soil and today we are starting one of those things with mushrooms so I actually don't know very much about mushrooms um, really not much at all other than the fact that I like to eat them when somebody else tells me that they're safe but as it turns out we hired our employee Will which many of you have seen on videos at the beginning of this year and it turns out he knows a lot about mushrooms all right Will a decent amount <laughs> Maybe we should preface this by saying I've never done this before. Okay, well we can say that. Okay. But you know a heck of a lot more about mushrooms than I do. And Will took me out to a place called Mushroom Mountain where we talked with Olga and she gave us some advice. And actually I did get a little clip of that that I'll put in right here. You got some soil? All right. We are here. All right, we're here at Mushroom Mountain. What we want to do is bring straw in there mm -hmm. and do it with straw because it's going to break down straw much faster. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have to worry about wood chips. Oysters, they will break straw down in like three months. Okay, but you want to remove that those wood chips that are already there? No, no, we'll leave it Put in it right there. on top of mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We might have a little bit of competition in there with the, you know, with the other mushrooms, but we don't care. Yeah, it's just inky caps. Mm -hmm. Well, inky caps, they love straw as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, yeah, yeah, I've left the, like weed bales out in the yard and in a shade somewhere, mm -hmm. and one day it just. Whoosh. Yeah, we have a lot of them. Do you know how long, uh, how persistent is this stuff? Like, how many does it break down in like five, ten four, years? Or? Four years minimum is what I've been reading. Four or forty? Four. Four. Four years is what I've been, and it obviously depends on how strong the contamination is because I've been reading from some people who actually got the straw or hay that was directly sprayed and they put that on their garden of mm -hmm. course once that gets into the soil that's a little bit harder to get rid of versus once it's already been digested yeah. and all of that sure and composted yeah and of course then that comes into whether it was thermophilic or st you know static or how you were getting to that point there may be a measure of what's in our soil that would work itself out after a couple of seasons mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I've seen some people talk about planting things yeah. like um, 
corn crops and grass crops and hemp and things that go ahead and pull. Yeah, I saw a bunch of different articles and blogs, people blogging about it and huge problem. Huge. Yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is really huge and it's devastating for people who are just trying to get into gardening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The majority of my audience are new gardeners, yeah. people who've been doing it for like the last handful of years. Yeah. And man, if you think I'm going to grow my own food and mm -hmm. then everything shrivels up and dies, you want to quit. So like, right, right. Like show and, like. and I can imagine that most people don't even like um, research. They just think that they're bad gardeners and yeah. they, don't, they don't go further For and sure. look into it. Then you are going to um, cool it down, inoculate it with the, with the fungus, and mm -hmm. then you need to put it in some kind of containers. Okay. So like, so it can colonize. So it can colonize it, yeah. And you're gonna fruit them out. So like five gallon buckets or nursery pots are perfect for that because you can you can stack them. They already have holes. And just fruit out the mushrooms maybe once or twice. Okay. And then take what's left over that um, it's gonna be still like nice and fluffy and it's gonna have mycelium and then mix that in with the soil. Okay. 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 I'm not sure how long we should take. Maybe like in half of it planted like after three months and then the other half planted in six months and okay. see what happens with each, you know? Okay. So by the time it fruit, it colonizes mm -hmm. and fruits, it's like three months? Right. Or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll start fruiting within six weeks. I tried also with, with King's Tropharia to see like oh, how nice. that would work because King's Tropharia, you plant, you, there are mushrooms that grow right on the ground, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I usually like, I tell people that uh, uh, enjoy gardening and want to introduce mushrooms into their garden is to go with that mushroom because it has like really sweet mycelium, brings in earthworms, the earthworms are aerating like the whole mm -hmm. soil and uh, and then it also creates like a, a mycorrhizal, uh, it creates relationships with the plants to where it's it's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. So it's really, it's a really cool mushroom. So we could try that one too and see if that one works yeah. as well. Would you want to use wood chips? Wood chips, wood chips and straw with that one. Wood okay. chips they, they do grow on straw as well. Okay, would mm -hmm. you pasteurize all that before you did that or just um, do that straight up? Cause you can do it straight up, but just make sure that the, the wheat straw is wet. Is it wet? needs to be okay. nice and nice and moist. Um, we'll it's going to be the sometime. healthiest high plant oil in once we're done with it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. You, okay. feel, you feel good? Yeah. Okay. Good. He looks excited. He, used to, he talked to him about mushrooms <laughs> and that's going to get excited. <laughs> you wrap that and I'll do the books. Quite welcome. Well, I thank you guys so much. Yes, so much. You. Yeah. And your wisdom. We'll be in touch. I'm so excited. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's so nice to meet you. Yes, it's lovely to meet you too. Yeah. Bye. All right. Yes. You guys. While we were there, we got some spawn from Olga for a couple different things. And I'm going to let Will talk to you. Here's your. Well, you talked about soil before. You've done YouTube videos. You've. All right. So, what are we doing, Will? All right. So, we are going to inoculate these buckets with oyster mushrooms or at least attempt to um, so we have a pot here and we're heating it up to 160 degrees 160 to 170 degrees mm -hmm. is what's recommended um, and we're going to use some fresh straw uh, you don't want to use old straw because it might have other funguses in it but this is the reason we're pasteurizing it so we right. can get whatever's in it out so what's in here now? Just water? Just water. Yeah. Just water in here right now. And you did wash out the buckets and we uh, sterilized them as well. Yeah. With alcohol. Um, and we drilled these holes. This is a 3 8 of an inch bit. Um, they're about three inches apart. You'll see, you'll see them close together on some mm -hmm. videos. And you'll see them really, really far apart. And most people say one quarter to a half inch bit on okay. all these. So. Um, all right and how many we're trying to do three buckets or two two buckets two buckets okay. i might have done them a little bit too close together um but you can just harvest them when they're smaller they taste better when they're smaller okay anyways so i think they do that's basically it for the bucket you've got this straw in burlap sack burlap sack yeah you can put it in people put them in pillowcases you can just put the straw straight in there but i think it'd be easier we can just right grab some heat gloves and lift up the burlap right. sack. And how long do we have to put it in here for? One hour. 160 to 170 for one hour. Then you take it out and we're gonna hang it like on a board or something and okay. let it come down to room temperature because if you put the straw in there and the mycelium and the spawn in there, 
Um, when it's hot, it'll just kill the, right. the spawn. Okay. So. so why oyster mushrooms? For this? Yeah. Um, that's what Olga recommended. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she recommended. <laughs> She did recommend it. So there have been studies, is what she said, shown that oyster mushrooms do remediate soil. So they pull contamination out. And also, what's the other one that we're going to do? King Strophoria. King Strophoria. Wine cap mushrooms. Wine cap. Thing. Okay. And those we're just putting directly in the walkways. Yeah. On fresh, around. Fresh wood chips. Not so, about two weeks old. If it's completely fresh, there's natural fungicides in the wood. If you right. were just to put it down with completely fresh wood, it would... So we're actually waiting to do that until we can get some fresh wood chips. So we need fresh wood chips that are 20% or less pine. So that's, that's a little bit hard to do here because we live in pine country. This is where a lot of pine is grown. And so when you get wood chips, a lot of times they're very heavy pine. So we need to locate some fresh hardwood chips that we can lay down in the walkways of the high tunnel. And we will then put the King Strophoria spawn out to grow them. And even though we're not putting them directly on the contaminated soil, we're gonna put them around the contaminated soil Oil, um, which will inevitably pull contaminants. It, that mycelium will grow into the beds. Yeah, it'll grow in. We're doing it. We're doing the thing. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Pitchfork or something? Do you need this other uh, one? Brought two. So the plan is, once we have our pasteurized straw, we will then Ooh. inoculate that. Whoopsie days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, so we'll inoculate it with the spawn, which I'll show you guys. And we're going to then let those fruit. And essentially, once we're done fruiting these mushrooms out of this, it's allowing that spawn to multiply. Am I telling the truth here? So the mycelium will grow into the straw and once it eats the straw a good bit it's going to fruit at that point okay. that's when mushrooms fruit because they're trying to reproduce and once they eat it a good bit they're going to produce a fruit right which is the mushroom and the spawn and the uh, spores come out of the mushroom and that's just it trying to replicate right. itself and then basically. at what point are we mixing this into the soil in the high tunnel we're going to let it fruit two times and then we're going to mix the entire bucket all the contents into the soil okay so then these mushrooms are going to start growing out there correct Okay. That's the plan at least. We are going to grow these mushrooms in this very controlled environment of these buckets to guarantee as much success as possible. Let it fruit twice. And then when we take all of the contents of those buckets and we're going to mix those in with that contaminated soil, then that's going to set to remediating those. So this is not an immediate fix as far as, okay, we have contaminated soil and I want to get the contaminated contamination out right now but considering that right now it's summer we're going to grow these over the course of you know the rest of this year and mix those in hopefully a year from now that's going to be really starting to work in that soil what Olga was telling us that oyster mushrooms and King Strophoria mushrooms have been shown to do massive remediation and soil that has way more toxicity than what we're dealing with we're dealing with actually a very low level of contamination um, I've had a lot of people bring up they're like well are you still gonna eat the food that comes out of that if you are eating commercial meat beef specifically you're eating this much to I mean you're eating more than this because they ate the toxic hay it was still toxic enough when passed through to their manure then gone through the composting process that it could still kill our garden the 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 cows ate it and so that's where we have to go okay this does bring up some questions about where we should be sourcing our meat and the importance of sourcing meat in a place that is farming in a regenerative practice. But all of that to say, um, yes, we're gonna eat what comes out of this high tunnel. At this point, I don't like it. Like, I don't like that that toxicity is there, but I also understand how toxic the world that we live in is. And so my hope is that by using these mushrooms one this is also growing food i mean oyster mushrooms and wine cap mushrooms are both good to eat so we're still growing food we're adding another crop but it's also going to add health to that soil you're like really getting creative well, it keeps like moving around all right 
Brilliant. Well we done, go. sir. One hour later. I want to lay it down. I'll put it on top of that bale real quick. I mean, I just need to let it drain somewhere without it touching the ground. You don't want to touch the ground because there's fungus in the ground. It's like a giant straw colander. And let it cool off. All right, here's our spawn from Mushroom Mountain. Mm-hmm. And these are, are these white oysters or blue? These were blue. Warm blue. Warm blue oh, oysters. And we've been keeping these in the fridge since mm -hmm. we brought them home and got them from Olga. Smell it. Oh. Mushroomy. It is mushroomy. So you want the straw to be moist. Um, you want to be able to have it kind of come up between the yeah. water, the moisture, like go between your fingers. You don't want it to be dripping like crazy. That'd right. Be, that'd be too wet for it. You feel good about the temperature? Yeah, I think we can. I think we can go ahead and do it. Straw in there, two or three inches at a time. It's not quite room temperature. It's just warm. But as long as you can put your, put your hand in there comfortably, it's, this is good to go. I haven't didn't see really see a lot of people talking about it, but I would pack the straw a little bit tight because you don't want a lot of airspace in there because mm -hmm. the mycelium is going to try to eat it eat it all, and it needs to be a little bit compact. I mean, you just don't want to just throw it in there and have it right. be all fluffy, you know. And just take your spawn, crumple it over it like that, and you just keep layering it. So how much spawn do you put in? There's no like set okay. amount. You just want to make sure you can just make sure you cover it pretty evenly. Just about like that would be about good. I don't, I mean, I'm asking from complete ignorance here, but like right here, we're just trying to find the most optimal conditions for this type to grow. So you wouldn't just go put this directly out in straw in like a high tunnel or in a garden. Yeah, I think the problem, well, we, I inoculate logs, but I've never inoculated any other medium with oysters right um, i know when you inoculate oysters in the logs you want to like set them like that far off the ground because if the logs touch the ground something a uh, wild mushroom okay. would, will colonize the log before the oysters would be because there's wild mushrooms here that want to colonize logs right quicker than oyster mushrooms or like a cultivated oyster so that's mushroom. why we're just trying to give i mean we're trying to give this the optimal correct yeah yeah growth we, to like, get that's started. Why we pasteurize it we we're trying to to kill right. off all the other funguses that may be in here. So we got this bag of spawn from Mushroom Mountain. They ship, mm -hmm. don't they? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can get all different kinds mm -hmm. and then you just look up the best way to grow them and mm -hmm. give them whatever conditions they need pretty yeah. much. I've only ever done oyster mushrooms on logs and I really don't even do logs anymore because you can find them in the wild very so easily. Much, yeah. But since we're trying to do, deal with the contamination issue, right. we'll use this. Yeah, they got all types of different mushrooms there. Olga knows her stuff. She does know her stuff. I really liked her. So you get like a block of spawn like this that's 25 bucks or whatever it is for Thereabouts. whatever type, yeah. you know, roundabout. And then we're probably going to do two buckets with this. So Will does this thing, what, yearly, where he'll take a bunch of logs that he cut down and then inoculate them to grow mushrooms and does like a community thing and has people come over and they just do a whole bunch at once. So he's gonna have to get his YouTube channel up and going to teach us all his ways. For some reason they said put the end with the spawn on the top. I'm not 100% sure why you wanna do that. But that's what they said. A couple other things. We drilled holes in the bottom of this one. I saw some videos recommending that you do that. <clears throat> But I'm kind of worried about the mushrooms trying to fruit from the bottom. The other bucket, we didn't do that. So we'll just let you know yeah. how that goes. All right. So you top it off with spawn on top. Mm -hmm. Lid. Put the lid on it. No holes or anything on the lid. And then we're going to put that in a, a dark space of 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Two to three weeks until it starts pinning. What that means is you'll see like little mushrooms forming out of these holes right here and then after that happens once you see them start pinning you're going to put them in like a sunny a, sort of a sunny spot in your house or something room temperature just about and uh and it'll fruit 65 to 80 degrees so we just need to put it somewhere like in a closet crawl, or crawl, crawl space, space um, the house. Okay. 80 percent plus humidity for the house yeah we're good we live in south carolina so we're good maybe if you're not in a humid place you would have right. to think that out a little more 
but yeah, 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 80 plus percent humidity for two weeks, two to three weeks until it starts pinning. And then once it starts pinning, put it in your house in a sunny spot. Da, da, da. Good job. And repeat. Well, guys, follow along with us. This hopefully will be a move that helps to restore the soil in our high tunnel and heal it from the contamination that it has experienced. And then Will's determined to turn me into a crazy mushroom lady and at least one of my children, he says. One of them will. At least one. Because no we got to be legacy minded, right? <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We bless you. Until next time.